What is going on guys, welcome back. In this video today, we're going to learn how to deploy Python applications to Google Cloud Run directly from source. So let us get right into it. All right, so we're going to learn how to deploy Python applications to Google Cloud Run directly from source in this video today. Now, I recently made a video on how to do it with Docker, how to define a Docker file and either build everything locally and push it to the cloud or build it in the cloud directly. Today, we're going to learn how to do it directly from source. No Docker file, no containerization. Now, Google behind the scenes still works with containers, but we're just going to provide the source code. We're going to provide the requirements and a one line uh, proc file, and that's going to be it for this video today. Now the application that I'm going to deploy today, you can deploy whatever you want. It really doesn't make a difference. A web application, something that listens on a port is important. You need to listen on port 8080. That's the only requirement, but it can be a simple chat script. It can be a Flask application, Django application, fast API application, doesn't matter. I'm going to use a simple to do list application, which you can also find on my GitHub. So you can find it uh, here in YouTube tutorials and then to do list app Flask. And uh, this is a very basic application, you can add stuff to it, you can delete, you can edit, and you can check that's basically it doesn't really matter what we're deploying here, but this is going to be the application that I use here. So this is what we want to see in the end, online in the cloud. Um, and of course, we're going to use the Google Cloud uh, console. So we're going to use the developer console. So make sure you have an account, make sure you go to the console.cloud.google.com site. And then what we're going to do first is we're going to create a new project. So I'm going to click here on select a project, I'm going to say new project. And this is going to be now the to do deploy. Now I have already used to do app deploy, I have used to do app tutorial or something like this. So I'm going to use to do deploy. Um, and I'm going to click create. And we're going to proceed now from the command line. So what I want to do is I want to go through the steps in the command line, I don't want to do it uh, in the UI, you can do most of these steps, if not all of the steps in the UI as well. But I think I have more control in the command line. So I prefer that. So just go to uh, to the to do deploy page, then go here to the dashboard. So to the cloud overview dashboard, because you're going to need two things, you're going to need first of all, the project number, and you're going to need the project ID. So I'm going to copy the project ID directly here. And what you're also going to need is the Google Cloud CLI. So you need to have the command line interface, the G Cloud CLI. And there are multiple ways to install it, you can just Google, uh, Google Cloud CLI installation for your operating system. I personally, I'm running Linux, Pop OS to be precise, so an Ubuntu based uh, distribution. And here what I do is I say sudo, or actually not sudo, I say snap install, and Google Cloud CLI is what I used. So this is what I already have installed on my system. Uh, I think we can run a snap list grab Google Cloud. And there you go, you can see here Google Cloud CLI. Um, and that is uh, what allows you then to use the following tool G Cloud. This is the thing that we're going to use in the command line here. The first thing you want to do if you haven't run this before is a G cloud init. I'm not going to do it now. And I'm also not going to do G cloud auth login because that's going to prompt me to log in. I'm already logged in on my system here. So I'm already authenticated with this account here with neural nine. And once you have done that, once you have done the authentication, what you want to do is you want to say G cloud config set project and you want to provide the project ID that we just copied. So make sure you don't have additional white spaces here. Uh, but that is what we're going to do here. So that is um, the command, which is going to select this project as our working project, there you go, update it. And what we want to do now is we want to enable uh, run dot Google apis.com because this is going to create um, a service account for us for computation. So a compute engine service account. So we're going to say here G cloud services enable run dot Google apis.com. So this is what we want to do here. This is going to create now our computation account and this computation or compute engine service account uh, will be what we use in order to deploy everything. And what we need to do for this account now is we need to add uh, permissions, or we need to add a role to it so that we can actually build in the cloud. So we're going to say G cloud projects at dash IAM dash policy dash binding. 
And now we need to provide the following things. Project ID first. So we need again to copy, if you don't have it copied anymore, you copy this again, you put it in here, <clears throat> and then you say dash dash member equals, and now we need to provide uh, a pretty long name, which includes the project number, not the project ID, but the project number, and the name is service, <clears throat> service account, then colon project number. So this thing here, and then dash compute at developer dot g service account dot com, and then dash dash role is going to be equal to roles slash cloud built builds builder. This is the role we want to add to this compute account or compute engine account. And that is going to allow us to run the command. So what do we need to do with our project now in order to deploy it? Uh, three things. First of all, set the port to 8080. This is a requirement, it needs to be listening on this specific port, set the host to 0000. Um, then add a requirements txt file, which is going to contain all the packages needed. So in this case, just flask, but if you use pandas, numpy, anything like that, list it here. Um, and then we want to have another file, which is going to be a proc file with a capital P. And in here, we're going to have one single command. And this single command is going to be web colon. So for the web, what we want to do is want to say Python three app.py. This is going to run the app py file on the web. That's it basically. Um, now, how do we actually deploy this very easily? We just go now to this directory. So in my case, I'm going to jump to current. Uh, in here, I'm going to go to the to do list application. And here now I have my so uh, source code and the proc file. So what I do here is a simple G cloud run deploy. And then dash dash source is the current directory. So period or dot. And then what I can do now is I can define a service name, I can select, for example, uh, to do list at flask, it doesn't really matter, it's a default. Uh, then it asks me, uh, do I want to enable the following APIs? Um, yes, I want to. Then it's going to ask me for the location next. So here I want to provide something like Europe West uh, four, which is the Netherlands, I think this is I, I'm not sure if it's the closest to me. But you just uh, choose a location that you want to use. So for example, here, I'm going to go with 21. Uh, then it asks me deploying from source requires an artifact registry Docker repository uh, will be created. Do you want to continue? Yes allow on un uh, unauthenticated invocations to to do list app. Yes, I want to do that even though the default is no, just because I want to use the application now without without authentication. So when I say yes, it builds everything. And after this, it's going to be uh, deployed and we can use it right away in cloud run, you're going to see that this is the case by going to uh, cloud run here for this project. So make sure you still have to do deploy selected cloud run. Once everything is done, uh, actually, now we have a problem does not have access to the bucket. So let me just double check this here. All right, so I think we're missing a role here. So I'm going to run the command from before that we had, which is this one here, but I'm going to run it now with a different role. I'm going to say that I also want to have the role storage uh, dot object viewer, because it needs to be able to access the individual resources here. So that should work. Now let's run this again. Let's go through the same options again, service name, then 21 here, then yes, here. And let's see if it works now. So as I said, what we're expecting is we want the result then to be uh, I think it worked now, uh, we want the result to be or the result will be able or will be visible in the Google Cloud Run services here. So the final result is a service that is created. And this should then be just easily uh, deployed and ran in the cloud and we can then just use it. Alright, so everything worked well, you can see we have a service URL. Now I also already refreshed this page, you can see we have a service here now, and it should also display the same URL up here. If I click on it, our application is now deployed in the Google Cloud. 
it's the same URL. Actually, it's not the same URL. So let me just click on this. It redirects to a different one, interestingly. Uh, but our application is here now. I can use it online. You would be able to use it right now if you were trying to use it. But of course, the video is not live yet, so you don't know uh, the URL. And I'm going to shut it down after recording this. But you can see we successfully deployed this to the cloud. And it was, in my opinion, even easier than with Docker. We just ran a couple of commands and our app is now live. We deployed it directly from source. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting a like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.